It's Forex start today. Let's go. So, guten Morgen, it is, what day? Today is Monday, April 29th, 2019. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Ni hao Guten Morgen. Jumbo. Hi, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for very much for being a client. If you have not yet joined the TradersWay family of foreign exchange traders, please visit TradersWay.com today. Open an account. You can have a fixed spread account, a variable spread account, an ECN account. Set it up. It takes 30 seconds. Then when you're in back office, download MT4. And I come back to this video here at the Forex.today YouTube channel and download my chart templates and booyah, what I trade with, you got. So you got my tools, you got me, you got a broker that cares about you. The rest is up to you, my friend. Just add blood, sweat, and tears for years. No, it doesn't hurt to be a little bit smart. Just never hurts. So what do you want to do today? Dollar, uh, dollar pairs, yen pairs, Swissy pairs, gold, oil. I'll take some Q&A. And then uh, what? We'll get ready for the week. Hey, somebody wanted to do COT, didn't they? Somebody wanted to. I, I didn't like it. I'll maybe. Well, you know what? Hang on. Let's hang on. I didn't. I should have thought about this like, about five minutes before starting the webinar. Would have been excellent. Hang on. Uh, let me see if I can uh, get us some COT data. Maybe we'll do the calendar. Why not? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, while I'm messing around doing this, why don't you subscribe to the Forex.today channel? But And also, I noticed some of you guys have been posting what you learned by the video. Was it on Friday or was it on Thursday? I think it might have even been Thursday. But I've seen, I've been seeing your comments as they've been coming in. So I congratulate you for that. Because that takes effort. It takes vulnerability. And all that is, you know, part of being uh, a professional. Because, you know, when you start working with clients, you have to show them everything. Oops, you know what I need to do? I need to zip over here. Let's do this. Can I have your WhatsApp number? No, but thank you. Hey, uh, why don't you just email me though, okay? I'm reachable. I just can't have 20,000 people. Ring, 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 It's just too hard to manage. Um, but... Why don't you email me, wayne at fxbootcamp.com? Okay. Do that. Reach out to me that way. All right. So first thing we should probably do is take a look at this week. We are, you should already know some of the big numbers or big, big events coming in. Uh... Let's filter this, though, and we can just go, well, I guess we'll leave it here. Things to look for, okay? Remember that hot GDP that came out last week? Right? So you're going to see things like PCE is going to reflect that, right? Spending is going to come in there, right? Consumption, right? Remember the big C in the GDP model?
Okay. All that goes into that. So that should be very interesting. See where those numbers are coming from. Okay. Manufacturing data out of China. Do you think that's going to be important tonight? Yeah, it could be. What currency pairs do you think that will uh, impact? Maybe some dollar, maybe some yen. Oh, check the, the thumbs down, guys. Already thumbs down me. Thank, thank you again, thumbs down, guy. I appreciate uh, your effort and your professionalism. You got it, man. That's that's hardcore. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so European GDP. Well, that's going to be interesting because um, there's a lot of components that we're missing out of Europe, like, um, you know, when these PMIs and such come through. Unfortunately, like, Germany is pretty late in the game to report, so it's interesting to, to start looking at uh, GDP and then find out, like, maybe the German the German economy is slowing down or stalling up. Okay. So we'll see. We'll have this come back. But I think we're in this area where money's flowing to the United States uh, from Europe. And any dollar strength is just reflecting that. But we'll see. I'd like to I'd like to believe that the worst is over in Europe. So if you if you were an investor and you were buying like businesses and uh, you know uh, you know real estate, and I don't mean houses, I mean cash flows, right? If you're buying cash flows, like if you could buy a skyscraper, right? that uh, if you can get a, a good price because the economy sucks, then that might be a wise investment. And that, that, that's the beginning of the cycle, right? That's not a, it's not like vulture capital. A lot of people poo poo on it. Um, um, I, I think it's the beginning of a good cycle where finally the prices allow people to come in and reinvest and, and then, and that, that stabilizes prices, that pushes things up, whatever. It's good for the economy in general. It's even good just for the neighborhood in general. But then when you look at like uh, the Euro, the European level, like the you know all the countries, not the neighborhood, but now all the countries combined together, it's good just to have demand for the currency. I mean, investment is a good thing, right? So anyways, uh, maybe all this starts to get reflected in, in GDP and stuff. I think it's a bit early, but maybe, uh, like, how do I express what I'm thinking? Um, always a good thing to try to do, right? So you, you have a cycle like this, right? Where, um, let me change colors. Like, um, we, went, we went through this period, right? Gee whiz, I'm trying to click the blue. There we go. So we went through a period like this where the economy um, was crashing, right? And then I think we're sort of in here or maybe even in here. And this is a great time to invest, right? Because you want to invest here. You don't want to invest and then go through a period of pain and then go through a period of stagflation because as many of you guys have found out in your own trading accounts, that's that's the worst case scenario. You usually bail, right? When it, it's so painful, uh, you give up. That's usually when it recovers, right? And so you want to kind of buy when it when very, when just the first flows of money are coming in. I'm wondering if that's where we are in Europe, right? Is that right? See, that's the problem, right, Joe? I don't have boots on the ground. Um, and you know, like even little things like you know, um, so like my daughter said something about like Atlanta being beautiful. What she meant was um, you know the big city, right? And I said, and it was kind of shocking when I said it internally. Anyways, I said, well, wait until you see Paris, right? Love Paris. While I love the old Paris, I used to love Paris. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, there's riots every weekend. And when, and when the riots are stopped, then there's terrorist attacks. And then when you go to the Eiffel Tower, it's surrounded by barbed wire. And, you know, forget it. Paris sucks, right? You know, what? Right? And you're like, but it shouldn't. It didn't. Uh, 
and you know, wow, um, wow. It was a horrible thing to, to even think. You're like, wow, it used to be beautiful back when I was young, back when I was your age. Um, so I, hopefully that's just a mistake or a short period of time, but uh, uh, I hope it doesn't get worse. How about that, John? You know, I'm a lover. I, I might look like a, 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 a pit bull. I might look like a Rottweiler, right? But I'm a, I'm a lover. But I'm a hell of a fighter too. So, anyways, uh, I hope, I hope, I want the European um, economy to recover. But, but then again, you know, you got to get the socialist big dogs out of there. So I don't know. I don't know how you do that. So, anyways, moveon.com. Right, a <laughs> poodle. Yeah. Well, you know, like. When when Par uh, when uh, when Notre Dame burned to the ground, who were the first people to say they were going to rebuild it and pledge hundreds of millions of euros? The socialists or the capitalists? Think about that. All right. New Zealand should be very interesting out of there. Uh, I skipped all this other stuff like real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. Yeah, 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 I get it. We're on trend and all that kind of stuff. And the numbers are going to be better just out of seasonality and stuff. Yeah, 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 I get it. Okay, that's fine. Great. Uh, what we don't know is are, think, are things bottomed out yet in New Zealand? You know, hey, let's take a look at that. I think we can learn something there and get into trades. Right? Europe is doomed to rig right? <laughs> it's doomed. I, well, I don't want to say it. I, I, you know, I want to pretend that it's not happening. Um, but uh, whatever. I want to pretend that it's not happening. But how about this? Like, maybe it would be better. Like, you can't, like, fix all of Paris. But maybe you could buy a beautiful piece of Paris and and improve it and live in it or buy yourself a vineyard somewhere. Or, I don't know. Um, it, the first, like before, how about this? Before we, we try to take care of society, we need to take care of your family, right? And not just, you know, l make more money, buy better food, uh, drive a faster car, buy a more expensive watch, not that crap. Um, we need to like set your family up for a couple of generations, right? How are you going to do that? You know, and then once you set your, your family up for a couple of generations, then we start worrying about society, right? Building the cancer ward for children at the local hospital, uh, donating to charity, you know, like, uh, what was it about two months ago? I may, I helped make breakfast for 4,000 people. My wife, my daughter, my son, and I, she's all right, trying to give back one way or the other. But you need to start by a couple, take care of the next three generations of your family, right? So when you're dead, when you're dead, your kids and your kids' kids, they're set. Thank you, Daddy, right? How are we going to take care of that? What's your plan? Don't tell me you want to buy a Rolex. Don't tell me that crap. How are we going to take care of the next three? What, what's your plan? You're going to save? You're going to get two jobs? Or are you going to become a kick-ass Forex trader? <clears throat> what's your plan, Stan? You know what? <clears throat> I went to bed at 10.30 last night, and I was still staring at the clock at 2.30. I have an idea on how to, how to share that, that sort of knowledge and passion with you. <clears throat> I just need to find the time to make it happen. But the, I swear to you, that, that is the God's honest truth. I went to bed. My mind was just racing. I went to bed. I laid in bed, kept looking at the clock, kept looking at the clock. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, isn't it? But how many like how many videos on YouTube do you see that are chasing Rolexes and Ferraris and yellow Lamborghinis? And it's such a poverty point of view. It's such a a poor person's point of view. Like those people, if you actually do the math, and like that that's where everyone glazes over. Like let's do the math. Oh my God, I want to do the math. But if you just do the math, you'll find out like. It just doesn't work. Like what they do is just not work. What they sell you doesn't make any sense. Right? Yeah, good sleep is important. But I, I wasn't worried about me. I was thinking of you guys. So I'm wondering if I have finals coming up and then I have to graduate. And then I have to go back to school to finish my graduate degree. That's in June something. I'm going to have like maybe three weeks where I don't actually have homework and I have homework all day, every day. Right. So I might have three weeks and I thought maybe I can like do something. So I don't know. That, that was my thought. And I was thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. Okay. Anyways. All right. So what's the big uh, event of the week? Obviously this is, where is it? Okay, so that, that's going to be the big one, right? Great. This might be interesting. Okay, so we got a packed week, guys. And clear. Okay. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, back to back to back to back. Uh, one thing also to remember is Japan is shut down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, good. Cool. I'm just uh, trying to keep up with the chat. China shuts down on Wednesday? Really? What's going on in China? Oh, it's uh, May 1st, I guess, right? Is that what? Yeah, there's a big May Day thing. Yeah. Where's ISM services? Oh, so we got that on Friday, huh? So that's that's actually a pretty good one too. We got NFP and then ISM on the same day. Really sucks because I wish it was here. I'm not even sure why it's not there, but anyways. So what a great trading week we're gonna have, right? Yeah, Socialist Day. Right? I mean, think about it. What the world now has moved, or at least let's say the United States and most of, well, let's take the United States for example. Most people don't work in a factory anymore, right? So, like, what does that even mean, Labor Day? Um, small businesses, <laughs> you know, they don't get paid on holidays, right? When you're a small startup or a small uh, business, it's, you hate holidays. You're like, those are days I'm not going to get paid, you know? Uh, it, so Labor Day was like, you know, let the factory worker out of the factory day, right? <laughs> Keep them happy one more day. Um, so or maybe it was probably just retooling day. Like, what do we do with these workers? We have to retool the factory. Oh, give them a holiday. 
So, uh, so anyways, uh, you know, like, do farmers not plant seeds on holiday? But anyways, Labor Day is a fun day. Why not? Go have, but it, but that's not even U.S. Labor Day, right? So I don't know what it is. Uh, let's do COT. But anyways, as a as an entrepreneur, uh, I, I've never been a fan of holidays. I, I, I barely even remember them. I still like Labor Day and what's the other one? Memorial Day. I always mix them up here in the United States. I've only lived here like 25 years. I never, I can barely keep it straight. Right? Because when you're a small business owner, for example, or currency trader, which is the world's greatest small business, you don't want a holiday. You're like, damn, are the markets closed? Son of a bitch, why? Why are the markets closed? It's a holiday. Who wants a holiday? All right. Are we so... Let me check the... Okay, there we go. And I can't quite see it, so let me put it back. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let, let's break it down. Let's start with a dark blue. And we will do the light blue one because it's so hard to see. So what does that number represent? Bears. So I have to squeeze that in. We can't quite see it. Okay. Let's try it again. Can't quite see it here. Why did it go thin all of a sudden? Jeez whiz. Let me do it again for the 900th time. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are bears. Is that right, Brooke? Well, then, welcome. <laughs> Advent trades, is, I had to uh, close a few uh, day trades. Yeah, uh, well, the, that's, that's where sort of the benefit of trend trading comes in to play because... On periods when you when nothing's happening, you make money. Okay. Okay. So how about this? So those are bears. I guess I got this. Let's try to do this like green now. Mm. Okay, and the bears now, or sorry, the bulls are here. Okay, now there's a slight increase in volume. It's one thing I notice. There's a little uptick on bulls, a little uptick on bears. Okay, but the, the quick and easy here. It doesn't tell the whole story, but the quick and easy is this line. Okay, this this is the bull the bulls plus the bears, which would be a negative number, right? Yeah, I'm gonna make some changes there, Barry. Hang on. Just come here. Subscribe here. Okay. So we look at this and it's generally down, right? There are more bears on the euro dollar than bulls. Okay. And that might help you when you see, let's go to third color now. That might be helpful when you see some ups. 
you might find that in the long run, they're wrong. And those might be silly numbers, right? You see this? So this is the number of bearish, right? Bearish Euro contracts on the exchange, futures contracts. So these are futures contracts traded through an exchange in the United States of America. It's not opinion, it's not a survey, it's money. And these are speculators, not hedgers. So we're just simply looking at the number of open contracts. Bears, the number of bears with money in the market versus the number of bulls with money in the market. There are more bears and growing. But sometimes you'll see that even though you see this happening, you see discrepancy in price. What does that mean? There's inefficiencies. And that's where you make money. That's where you can make money. You, then you can also get to situations where it's so unbelievably extreme. There are so many bears that no one on the planet would want to buy this. And that, that could possibly be a, a top or a bottom. Okay. Alex says, how do you actually interpret some of this? Well, sometimes, okay, sometimes you see like the euro dollar going up. And it's not corroborated by what you see in here. And what you'll what creates that is profit taking. So sometimes you see a move in the foreign exchange market, like euro dollar going up, but you don't know if that means people are buying euro or if they are selling dollar. Okay, do you understand that guys? Okay, you see that? Euro dollar can go up. And I mean, not just for minutes, I mean for weeks. And I think a, an informed trader will say, if Euro dollar is going up, is it Euro, is it Euro up or is it dollar down that's creating the move? And the reason that is important is there could be a period of time where you're like, all right, Euro dollar is going up, but nobody's buying the Euro. So everybody's selling the dollar. And you have to ask yourself why. And usually a situation like that is so many people bought the US dollar for so long. Just imagine trillions of dollars in long position for the US dollar. So people were short Euro and pound and all these different things and they were buying dollars. Let's say for an entire year, people bought US dollars, okay? And then something changes, maybe something minor, but something changes, some people get spooked or whatever it is, or just the cycle ends, whatever. And suddenly people that have bought the trillions of dollars in dollar positions suddenly start to take profit. They're just simply taking their money back. Well, what that'll do is as they cash out for profit is the dollar will weaken and the Euro dollar will rise. Nobody's buying the Euro. All I said is people who were cashing out of their dollar longs. So that weakens the dollar. So relative to the weakening dollar, Euro goes up. And, but then the commitment to traders report will say, you know, nobody's buying Euro. So how can it go up if no one's buying it? Well, it's relative. So you could say this is the constant and the dollar's weakening. And then if the fundamentals haven't changed in Europe and a whole bunch of people took profit, they made money. What do you think they want to do in the future? Let's try to predict it. They made an investment. They made a ton of money. So what do you think they're going to want to do sometime in the re in the near future it, over the course of let's say one to three months what do you think they want to do again they just made bank buying dollar 
and they just took profit, they're flooded with cash in their trading account, what do you think they want to do? Probably sell it again. Okay, whoever made money selling this and then taking profit here, they're just going to try it again. Oh, hey, that's called a trend trade. Yeah, but probably on a day or even a week move, right? Not, I mean, daily or weekly candles, not, not even pivots, right? So it might be down for a year, up for three months, down for a year. But you don't think that big, so you miss it. I was telling you one time years ago, I'm playing poker. There's a, a woman sitting next to me, and I'm like, hey, what do you do? She's like, I'm a foreign exchange trader. I'm like, holy shit. I'm a foreign exchange trader. Like, I don't know any foreign exchange traders. You're a foreign exchange trader. She's like, yeah, my family's been a foreign exchange trader for generations. I'm like, what kind of tra trading do you do? She's like, we make one trade a year. Say so what? Yeah, they'll sell, take profit, bank. Uh, sell, take profit, bank. I'm not advocating that's the right way to do it, but some people take a bigger look than, uh, than a 15-minute chart, right? And by the way, who drives a yellow Lambo? The person with the big point of the big picture or the little picture? Okay. You know what I mean? All right. Pig, piggy, 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 can't you see? Okay. Piggy, 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 can't you see? All right. So this is, uh, what is going on? The, okay. Okay. Let's try to do this in the proper colors again. Where are the bulls? Where are my bulls at? Bull, bull, bull. Uh, well, it's hard to see. These are bulls? Okay, where are the bears? Where are the bears? It's the bear, uh, long bears, so it's this. Man, they're hard to see. Something like, I don't know, I can't quite see. Whatever. Something like that. Bulls and bears. What's the story? Well, again, the thing that you could look, the quick and dirty, is just look at the net. This is calculating here. Okay. It's just adding the positives and the negatives. Okay? And you're like, Wayne, what do you mean positive and negatives? Well, here's a zero line. Okay? So I didn't quite get that perfect. Uh, I'm trying to. It's more like, no. Okay. Okay. So it's looking like bull, how many bulls versus how many bears. So if it's below the zero line, there are more bears than bulls. Okay. Also, the thing you can look at is sort of relative direction. Okay. So currently... It's hard to even see. I mean, there's not much difference, right? So you see last week versus this week. Slight change, nothing dramatic. Okay. But what's been going on for, let's say, the year? Well, we started the year here and now we're here. Okay. Check this out. If this is the neutral zone... It's basically neutral, right? Okay. Well, it's not that it's bullish, it's neutral. Okay. So, for example, let's say there's one million buyers. One million bulls, but there's one million bears. Who's going to make money?
Well, the worst case scenario is you get a market like this, but haven't we seen that for a while? Okay. By the way, this, this blue line that's easier to see, that's just the euro dollar, or sorry, the pound dollar. That's just the price. Uh, economic data has been pretty good considering, the, you know, yeah, but is this is going to come down to risk, right? <clears throat> we don't know. That we still don't know Brexit, right? That's a major problem. Major, major problem. So prices have to get so low to attract you to buy real estate in London, for example, for you to be compensated for the risk. So like, let's say you buy uh, uh, a skyscraper resident, it's half residential, half uh, commercial, some, some retail at the bottom, offices, right? And, and a whole bunch of apartments. But if things go wrong with Brexit, uh, London's gonna lose Lots of jobs, no, less need for retail, uh, businesses might leave and go to Ireland or something, I don't know. But whatever, you might be stuck with, with a skyscraper and 50% vacancy. And it just screws up the deal. You can't, even pay your, you can't even pay your financing cost anymore. And it's a bad deal. So the only way to make the numbers work is you got to buy it for cheap. Okay, so uh, so I don't know. I don't know if it's that cheap. Might not be cheap enough. Okay. So we look at this quickly. Is the market bullish or bearish? Well, there's more bears than bulls. We can see it's below the zero line. And then over the last week, more bears have entered than bulls. Okay. This is the number of bulls. This is the number of bears. You see that? It's not easy to see. So let me try to draw. I'll just do each in black. Here's the number of bears. Here's the number of bulls. More bears and less bulls equal down for Aussie. Okay. It's not as many bears as there used to be, but we are below this waterline. Highlander says check occupancy rates. Yeah, but it's the, see, in finance, guys, in finance, what exists now doesn't matter. What exists now is called accounting. So in finance, it's all about flow, cash flow, future expected return on capital, future expectations. So if you're like, well, I like this building. It's got a cash flow in the past. People have paid rent. Great. But 300,000 people might lose their job in nine months. Oh, well, that would be bad for me if I make this investment. Okay. So what has to happen is price has to drop to make the to compensate for the risk. So what you need to do is find an owner that says, oh, my God, I got to get out. I got to get out. I can't afford this. I'm going to go bankrupt. I'm going to die. I need out. Give me my money. And you're like, well, I'll give you 50 cents on the dollar because of this whole Brexit thing. Please get me out, right? You got to find someone willing to sell cheap. And there's always someone. Because the funny thing is what you don't realize about money is you might value money a lot. 
money might be hugely important to you. But there are plenty of people on this planet where it's not a big deal to people. It's not. They're just like, oh, yeah, well, I lost $8 million on that, you know, next time. But they make, they make more than that in a month, right? And you're like, $8 million is the... That's that's enough money I could retire on the rest of my life. And someone's all like, dude, that's that's a week's wage. They don't even care. They're like, well, I liquidated that property. Things went bad on the Brexit. That happens. I owned it for four years. So I only, you know, they didn't lose money. They just lost capital. Right. So don't worry about that. It's all about timing. Got to think big, bigger, big, big. Yeah. See, that's the whole thing on my, my idea that I was up all night. Like one thing I've been struggling with, with you guys for so many years is like, I teach you how to trade. Like here's a pivot point. It's support. Look at this. It's a double bottom. It's support. Look at this. It's a five, a cross. Maybe that's a change in price, change in momentum, but that's like the easiest part of Forex. And I'm always want, trying to get you guys bigger and thinking about next and next and next and next and next. And I've been talking about this on and off for many years. Like I want to teach you like to trade like a business, but to get like that, you need to think like a business and you need to plan like a business and, and account for a business. And um, your trading then changes. Like you need to know pivot points. You need to know price action. You need to know reversal patterns. You need to under be able to read moving averages and say, oh, this market's bullish or this market's neutral and say, I need to switch. But you're missing like, like I keep, I keep thinking about sort of the normal world of, let's say 25 years ago. And we know history will repeat itself. And I think we all agree in, in virtually every country on the planet, let's say all OECD countries, the worst of the financial crisis is over. We're not thinking depression, and, but there's going to be another pullback and another recession and all that kind of stuff, but not depression stuff like capitalism didn't fail. Banks didn't crash, right? Like we, we got worse, but we, we're going to go through normal business cycles, but the past to some degree will, will come back. Right. And if you go back to 25 years ago, and this story was important to me because I remember one day when, when like it, it, in my book, I talk about um, the perfect trader being my mentor, right? I was mentored by the perfect foreign exchange trader. But then like I needed to quantify it. I'm like, well, who is the closest to the perfect foreign exchange trader? Like, how much money does this dude or dudette make? Like, who is my role model? Is I don't know if there is a role model, but like, who is it, right? Who, who might it be? And I do some research and I'm like, and I find out the first foreign exchange head, hedge fund started by John Taylor, FX Concepts. And I do some research, I Google, 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 and I pull up uh, uh, an article it was like a newspaper or something, and it talked about his IRS tax filings. He made two hundred fifty million dollars a year in right gum in in that's sort of like after deductions and stuff. That's his IRS after all his deductions and all. And by the way, this is not his business. This is John Taylor, the person he owned FX Concepts, which made m money. But his take home IRS personal tax return was two hundred fifty million. And I said. I can make $250 million a year. Let's maybe beat that. But, but, he doesn't trade like you and I. You need to know how to do this. But he made it all on interest. Okay? Made it all on interest. And why would you do that? And this is what kept me up one night because we, we, we talk about, I don't know if I get the, the thing across enough, so I think I should teach you how to build an entire business model on it. But 
right? If you knew you can make 100% to 200% a year, do you, do you think you could attract investors? Yeah. So why don't you do that? It's a pretty simple question, right? Like, what is, what's your competition? So let's say you invest in real estate, right? Million, the best way to become a millionaire is real estate, right? Right? We all know that, right? So, has anyone invested in real estate here? How many people have, like, not owned a house, like, obviously you own a house, but what if you own, like, investment property? Houses, apartments, commercial real estate, you, you own a, like, it, isn't it amazing? Like when you drive by and you see a fast food restaurant, somebody owns the land underneath and has a 30 year lease. Isn't that amazing that you see a Jiffy Lube where they change oil on your car? Somebody owns that. I was looking at a portfolio of Dollar General stores. You know, the dollar store where you go in and buy junk. You can buy like eight or nine of them. And you know how it's all priced? price like this they say you have your uh, rent minus the expenses okay e equals your net operating income and this property produces seven percent a year so you're like oh well I'll get all my money back in about ten years so if I put five million in now to buy this property in about 10 years, I'll have 5 million back after that, right? Well, now, if you had to borrow the 5 million, well, then you're going to have financing costs of your, 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 right? So if you're making 7% a year, but you're paying a 5% mortgage, hey, but you're still clearing two, and someone else is paying the mortgage. You see what I mean? But that's how you do it. So is this 7% going to make you filthy, stinking rich? No, it's income. Income doesn't make you rich. So what are you hoping? <clears throat> what are you hoping is going to happen over the 10 or 20 years? Valuation goes up, right? So someone else pays the mortgage, which eventually when you sell, it, they're going to take your sell price, subtract whatever's left over on the mortgage, and you get everything in between, right? Well, so if someone else paid down the mortgage, your mortgage is smaller, which means they were just paying you. You just have to wait. But there's, there's, there's a difference between income and valuation, right? That's how you need to trade Forex. But I don't think you, I still, over all these years, I don't think you're thinking that yet. And I think, I, I, I think I want to take you guys through that in great detail, like great detail, build, help you build an entire business around that. But you have to know how to trade a 5A cross and know what a pivot point is, right? So, for example, you know, I'm a, if you're a bear, I'm pound yen, right? Here's what you do. You sell up here. Next. See it, right? So what do you do later after you learn how to do stuff like that? Oh, you're a bull? Look for a double bottom here. Gone. See, that, that's the easiest part of trading. Right? Are you guys prepared for that? I know you're working on your technical analysis. And then you're going to weave in fundamentals so you can get better 
not only a trading investing, but remember when we talked about a sellable story the other day? Like you need to be able to, well, how about this? Let, let's revisit. How are you going to get filthy, stinking rich in Forex? Is it risk? No, Raymond, my point is like, how do, if you're going to talk to a millionaire and a billionaire, what is the sales pitch? That you're going to make them rich? They already know that. They're not interested in that. So what, how does a rich person think? Short-term income, long-term valuation. So what do you, what is it you do? I scalp. Not interested. Okay, but whatever. We'll get there. Don't worry about that. How, right? It's not risk. So how is it? What's AUM? That's it. If you're not rich now, that's your problem. You don't have any money. Okay? That's it. You don't have any money. So you think if you take a bunch of risk, you're going to get money, right? No, you're wrong. You're just wrong. It might take me a long time to convince you. You might blow up your training account and move on to something else, and that doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter because you didn't have any money anyways. Oh, I lost five grand in the foreign exchange market. I guess I'll, I'll do drop shipping on Amazon. All right, great. If I do enough drop shipping, uh, I can get my yellow Lamborghini, right? Right? So whatever. So. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm going through school and I, I'm forced to work and 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 work. I work so much, work and work. It's Friday night, I drop my wife and my daughter off at the theater. I love theater. Drop them off at the theater. I go to a cigar bar not far by. On a Friday night, it's dark, there's loud music. I'm smoking a cigar with my laptop up and I'm, I'm crunching statistical mathematical equations for hours and then i'm like oh gotta go it's 10 10 30 at night gotta go pick up my wife and daughter like it's relentless right but it's this ridiculous sickening work ethic that you need and then this idea of a plan there's a re right there's a purpose to all of this and i sometimes think you get so caught up in a 15 minute chart that you forget all these bigger ideas. And, and as a college student, I have a five year plan. By the time I get my second degree, I would have spent five solid years at Harvard. Yeah, but I knew that I paid for it. I had a plan. You know what I mean? So I'm going to push you. I think, I don't know if you're going to accept that. I don't know if it's, maybe it's pull. I guess I'll pull you and you have to pull back harder than I pull you, I guess. I don't know. But uh, I want you, I want to challenge you. I think you're going to be able to learn this, right? I think you're going to be able to master technical analysis. How many people actually think they're going to be able to master technical analysis enough to just make, some level of money. Okay. I don't care. Like it doesn't even matter how much that you can just place trades. You can say, this is a downtrend. I'm going to sell it. This is an uptrend. I'm going to buy it and be able to put a plan together behind that simple basic strategy. How many people, I don't care if it takes you 20 years, how many people 
honestly believe they will be able to develop some level of competency. That is the easiest part of the whole thing, right? Like, then what? Like, what, what for? <clears throat> what for? Right? There's got to be a purpose. What's the plan? So we'll get there. And the biggest thing is if you don't have any money, money is going to be a problem because money is our product. Let's say you want to be a shoe, you want to be a shoe salesman. But you don't have any money, so you can't buy any shoes. Well, okay, you buy, you, you have a little bit of money, so you buy, or you rent a shoe store, <laughs> and you and you fill it with nine pairs of shoes. You're like, man, if I sell all nine pairs of shoes, I won't be able to pay my rent, right? Like, I don't need nine shoes. I need 900 pairs of shoes, right? Well, shoot, I'm going to need money. So you go to a bank. That's all. I... Go to a bank. But you're missing the fact, like, if you had $5,000, here's what's missing. This is why scalpers will never get filthy, stinking rich. And I'll try to move on. I'm sorry I went on this. I just haven't slept very much. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to such a higher level. Like, I think there's a lot of people that they look around the world. They look around and they're like, I'm the king of all I see. But they, you don't realize you're a frog in the bottom of a well. And all that blue sky above you, yeah, that's all yours, man. That's all yours, right? I'm trying to get you out of the well, and you're like, holy, holy smokes. This is way better than I thought. Holy smokes. Look at this. Woohoo! You're not going to own it all, but your, your, your horizons are going to get big. So check this out. You can control a portfolio of five hundred thousand dollars, right? If you're two hundred to one, you can control a portfolio of one million dollars. Why are you not controlling one million dollars? I want you to think about that. A shoe salesman goes to a bank, borrows a million dollars and then calls up a, a supplier of shoes and says, I need a million dollars worth of shoes. And one day a truck shows up, beep, 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 and they unload a million dollars worth of shoes, and then you start selling, sell, boom, 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 sell, sell, sell. That's how businesses work. Why are you not trading like a business? So you have a million dollars if you're 200 to one, and you're, if you're in the United States, you can't even get 100 to 1. All right, so, you, you know, oh, I can only control a quarter million dollars with my five grand. I mean, come on, then isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? You're leveraging the wrong way. Here's what a poor person does. Let me clear this up. They say, I'm going to make a trade, and I'm going to put $250,000 on this trade. <laughs> I have, I have $5,000 in the account. What happens is this dude? Or I have five k in the account. I'm going to put $100,000 on this trade. What happens to this dude? I'm going to get a yellow Lamborghini. I'm going to turn my $5,000 into $200,000. 250 that it's just so funny um it's the other way you got it backwards right that's not how you leverage why don't you build a portfolio of 250,000 from your five grand you understand everyone you've ever probably seen in the foreign exchange market is not doing it right because that's not sellable per se 
okay? But I'm trying to get you to see it. But it's the matrix, man. So many people are looking at the, the blonde woman in the red dress. And they're so focused on that that they don't see that it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. You're not even seeing it. It's not, you're not seeing the reality. All right. Cool. So, right? You remember this? We already identified this as support. We already identified this as resistance. We did all this last week. It's not new information. So you got this, right? Or you let it break in that. But it, like, dude, we did this last week. That's why we don't have to spend a lot of time. A lot of, not a lot has changed since last week. If you don't know these things, you're not even planning your week. Okay. The swing trading group and I met on Friday. We already had this down. Okay. That's one plausibility if you're a bull. If you're a bear, you're selling into a support, but I guess you could do it. You're going to be stubborn about it. This is a role reversal. So you can do it. That's cool. Sell it. Cool. If you get it right, you'll make money. Alejandro says, I'm sort of at the stage you're talking about. Is that right, Alex? <sighs> oh, yeah, it is. Sure trade. It absolutely is. Okay. But we uh, there's so much to it like we have to retrain ourselves right especially if you come from hardly anything like a watch like this okay a watch like this does it appreciate in value no not really no maybe but probably not does it make any income no this is stupid this is a retarded, stupid illusion and a complete waste. Okay? By the way, Harvard costs way more than this watch. Which was a better investment? Five years at Harvard, I lived there in the summers. I travel there like a bajillion times a year. It's ridiculous. Ridiculously expensive. It might, it's probably a better investment. I don't know for sure. Okay. But what should we be doing with our money? Income appreciation. Income appreciation. Income appreciation. Income appreciation. Income appreciation. Everything you everything you do should have the income and appreciation. Okay? You need to be broke. Okay? You need to be broke because all your money is invested into income and appreciation. You don't have any money. Money is an illusion. You don't have any money. So, sorry, somebody asked me for money. Uh, I can't remember when it was. And I'm just like, dude, I don't have any money. I don't have any money. Like, what do you mean you don't have any money? It's all invested. <laughs> like, I, it's all invested. It's like, it's working for me 24 hours a day. You can't have any of my money. It's working. It's doing stuff. Can't give you my money, then what? Right? <laughs> you don't have cash. Bill Gates probably doesn't even have a million dollars in cash. Now, of course, he could raise it. He could sell something. He could sell some stock or sell some real estate. 
He can sell something, right? But he probably doesn't even have a million dollars in cash. And then, you know, here's a guy that gives hundreds of millions of dollars away for free because he makes so much money, he can't help but make more money. Why? He doesn't have any cash. Right? Do you guys understand that? He's so rich, he doesn't have cash. Cash is a problem. He makes so much money because he has money invested that the, the illusion of cash, he's got so much of it, he, he can't even give it away fast enough. Yeah, Peter, maybe you need to be taller, Peter. <laughs> right? That's all it is, Peter. At least that's my problem. Yeah. I'm not tall enough, so I found out early in life it's better for me to stand on stage. Very impressive. All right, so anyways, here's what I'm getting to, guys. I do want you to succeed. I think about you all the time. It's You probably don't even believe me, but even from 10 o'clock, 10, sorry, 10.30, to about 2.30 last night, I thought about you. I don't know if your friends think about you that way. I don't know if your mom and dad think about you that way. Um, but I think about you that way. I honestly believe you're going to learn that this is support. This is resistance. And there's something in between here. And that you're going to be able to start making plans like, well, this is harder core support. And... You know, and looking at the commitment to traders report tells me the pound is neutral, so this is not likely to trend. So it might work its way back up here and then work its way down there. Not really sure. But if I was a bear, I'd kind of look to sell in here. And that would be very informative if it breaks out to the downside, and therefore I could sell it here. Right? Yeah. See, that's the thing. You don't have to sell it here. You can just say, if it fell from there and made a lower low, then I'll do this. But if you wanted, if you thought something different, you know, you could take it up here. Cool. These are just trade plans. You know, but, but that, what I'm trying to say is that's the prerequisite. Right? Do you read, do you read and write good? Do you do math good? Those are the basics. Oh, that right on, Raymond. Those are the basics. This is the easy stuff. It'll only take you five years, guys. Hey, I signed up for Harvard, paid ginormous amounts of money, ginormous amounts of time. That's only five years. I told all my friends, they're like, you're going to grad school for how long? Why is it so long? Oh, I'm doing two degrees. What? How long is it going to take? Five years. They're like, damn, I don't know how you can do it. I'm like, dude, five years will go by fast. It'll be terrible pain. For five years, it's going to be suffering and sacrifice for five years, and then it'll just be over. And I'll think back when I'm old, and I'm like, yeah, I remember those Harvard years. Yeah, I was a bitch. Glad I did it. It's only five years. See, to me, it's only five years. Well, it took me a year to just qualify to get in the program. Now, they shut the program down because it's too difficult. I love that even more. So the point is, if I tell you, look, it's only going to take you five years to master technical analysis. Just become proficient and skilled enough to begin. You want to be a chef? Go to culinary school. I don't want to go to culinary school. I want to be a brain surgeon. Go to medical school. I don't want to go to, I don't like reading. I don't want to learn fundamental analysis. All right. So there's smart money and dumb money. Which one do you want to be? You don't want it. Why? You don't want to master everything you possibly need to know about Forex? 
no, I don't, I don't believe in fundamentals. Like, what do you tell a person like that? Or like, how do you even respond? Like, I can't, I don't, what? You're a professional, but I don't read medical literature. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I'm going to wrap up. But one of the things I thought about is something we talked about years ago about doing a big conference in South Africa. Um, it's not a sales pitch for that. It's just more like we talked about it. I thought like charge like $25,000 for people that are already ready to start going from like just a, just a trader to a trading company, to a trading firm, to a trading enterprise. How do you like raise money and work with investors and be, you know, work with compliance and just, well, actually it's just raise money, raise money, raise money, raise money, raise money is really what it is. Right. Right. You know how to trade. So what's the secret to your success after that? AUM. So once you know how to trade, you're going to have to like raise money, right? Raise money, raise money, raise money, raise money. Raise money. So that becomes your business. I think compliance, regulation, accounting, lawyers. Blah, 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 blah. So, anyways, I was thinking about doing that. Uh, still, have, probably has to be two years from now. But, anyways, I think we should work toward that. Oh, if you need help getting in the next level, I already got that. Go to fxbootcamp.com. Sign up for performance coaching. That's it. You'll figure yourself out from there. Okay, let's move. Yeah, getting you to the next level, once again, that's straightforward. That's already been built for you. You just haven't been trying hard enough to find this, find it. You might need it. You're not trying hard enough. I'm here every day. Hey, go to fxbootcamp.com. So if you can't find it, you're just not trying hard enough. You don't need it bad enough. But anyways, we, we, do you remember why I drew this channel? I talked about the potential for the inverse head and shoulders. I remember when I drew it, that it didn't look likely, but it was there. I think I said, you know, I said, look, it's, there's potential for it. It's kind of interesting. Um, that it happened. So I even have it fibbed and everything. Very cool. Let's get rid of that. Oh, wrong one. Nope. Well, let's just redo the template. Cool. Okay. What was the projection last month? Do you remember? If you're a bull, the plan was this, remember? Because you thought that was support. That all made sense to me, right? Did you lose money? Doubt it. Okay. If you were a bear, right? There's resistance there. Remember, we had, we had three plans. Remember this? What was the last one? or I guess the first one. This is a very basic, very basic setup. So if you were a bear, that was the plan. Isn't that nice? Yeah, adventure trade, it's assets under management. The vehicle that you use to trade doesn't matter. So a mam and a pam, that's all managed accounts. It's a great way of doing it. Okay? But you can have a hedge fund. What's the difference? Is it, do, you, do you clearly know the difference? Yes, you are. I'm happy to do it. You guys know the difference?
There's also, like in the United States, you can have uh, a pool. They're just different uh, structures. For example, in a hedge fund, you become an owner of the business. You invest money and become an owner. Okay? That, a shareholder. Now, there's, there's different types of owners, right? Um, like limited partners and all that kind of stuff. But whatever, right? So general partners, limited partners, all that kind of stuff. And that, there's certain accounting for it and taxation around it because now you own a business versus something else, right? A, a pool is you're not an owner, but your money that you give a manager gets pooled with a whole bunch of other people's money. So your money goes in and it disappears. It just gets absorbed into this giant pool. And then you have to like do math to figure out how much do you get paid and how much does everyone else get paid? It's all pooled together in a one mumbo jumbo thing. And then managed, your money is not pooled. It's an individual separate account. Basically, you give someone power of attorney, right? And they trade your account. And that's that's a, a, a MAM and a PAM and all these different things are essentially all the, the same type of thing. It's a managed program. So, But it doesn't matter. They're just vehicles, right? They're just vehicles. A hedge fund is is set up that way, and I know I didn't spell it right, sorry. Uh, it's done because typically you're stuck in illiquid assets, right? No, you're totally wrong. I'm an expert on this event trade. No, I can say that because I've spent over a thousand hours. So anyways. Yeah, that's the beginning. Event trade, that's the easiest part. So uh, I, I don't want to get sidetracked on all this. I already have, right? But So anyways, what are you going to do? Do you have a plan for the next month? If you don't have a plan for next month, I don't know how you're going to plan tomorrow. Tell me what to do on gold right now. Tell me. We'll do a quick survey. Am I going to buy gold or am I going to sell gold? You're the boss. You come in and say, Don't take it, wait! What are you doing? I need you to... What, buy gold or sell gold? What do you want me to do? Come on, let's go. Got two sales, shorts. I got three. Sell, 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 sell. All right, everyone wants to sell. Good. Thank you. So let's put a plan together. You ready? That You already told me the strategy. You're the boss. I can do whatever you want me to do. You're the boss. Cool. You already missed your opportunity to sell, by the way. Why didn't you sell it? It's done. Why is it so difficult, right? Like, I I spent all last week teaching you simplify, 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 simplify. Remember? Simplify. Make it easy. Simplify through planning, through research. That stuff is fairly easy, too. Make a decision. Just simplify, 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 simplify. Now, some people are going to struggle all day on how to trade gold. Up and down and up and down and up and down and up. Simplify. You were supposed to sell here on the market open. Done. Next. You said you sold that, got stopped out. Why? That's the next question. 
Okay? Got in late, you're fired. Okay? That's what it is. Men of many talents, yeah, sold their weight. You're supposed to. That's what you do, right? That's that's the easy part of trading. Okay? Yeah, Michael, you're afraid, but that's what it's like. That's the real world. Oh, but Wayne, I was up late barbecue. I was here, dude. I was here. I have, I have a life, too. I have responsibilities, too. I was there. I had my mark, my charts open at five. It's your job. Oh, dude, I wasn't there. I was busy. You're fired. Okay. Someone said buy. Well, you know you can't buy here. It's impossible. You can buy here and you can buy here. Okay. These are daily pivots. Okay. That's it. It's so straightforward when you have a strategy, when you have a plan. Now, if you can back that up with nine reasons why you should sell, then you're even better. But you don't need nine, you need three. Why? I don't know. In the Western world, you need three. Maybe in your culture, you need four. Maybe in your culture, none is just good enough. I don't know. In the, in the Western world, you have to have three good reasons why to sell gold. Well, I'll give you three reasons why to sell gold. One, look at the carry on the U.S. dollar. Blah, 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 dollar strong. That's going to bring gold down. Boom. Two, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's looking for yield. There's no yield on gold. Three, blah, 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 blah. Look, I have three intelligent reasons why gold will not go up. In fact, we should be net short and we'll string together a series of trades to profit from my brilliant strategy. Okay. Yeah, it's 4.30 in the morning. Then Michael, move. You're like, wow, oh, Wayne, moving is too difficult. Okay. How about this? I don't know if you're married or anything. Let's say you got married. Let's say you, you knocked your wife up. She had a baby and the baby's crawling. And then you knock her up again. She's pregnant. Her belly button's popped out like a diving board. And you're like, and you say to her, as she's sitting there on the couch, she can barely move. Her, her whole stomach's going to explode. And yet, there's a baby crawling on the floor, and she, like, can't even bend down to pick it up because she's got the, oh, my God, I'm so pregnant. And you go up to her and say, hey, honey, I'd like to move to the other side of the country. Like, as soon as possible. I want to sell our house. I want to sell the stock market, cash out of everything, go to liquid on everything, and let's move away from your friend, your friends and your family. You won't see your girlfriends for another five years. So pop up the other kid, right? Right? You can sit in the chuck wagon, breastfeeding one baby and carrying the other on your hip. Let's go. <laughs> sell our house, sell our retirement investments, say goodbye to all your friends, pick up your babies. We're going to the other side of the country. If you can't do it, you might not have what it takes. That's what I did. That's called a trade, my friend. You want a big trade? That's called a big trade. What happens if you're wrong on that trade? I did that trade. It was a good trade. Good luck. You're like, oh, but it's too difficult, Wayne. Oh, yeah. 
I want to go to grad school, but five years of hard work's too difficult. Oh, I know. I can't get up at 4.30 in the morning. It's too difficult. That's difficult? A farmer can do it. Someone, like, I told the story before when I was in San Francisco and I was doing high-tech startup stuff. Every single day I ate at, I ate at the same restaurant. Because I don't have time to, like, where am I going to eat? I just need to stay alive. I hate eating. I hate it. I love food. I hate eating because it gets in the way of my productivity. So for as long as I can remember, I would take books and laptops to the restaurant. I get to the point where I just come in with my laptop and I just sit down and I open up my laptop and then food would arrive and I'd already have the money out or credit card down and, and I, I wouldn't even get a bill. They just pay it like I knew. And then realized like I'm sitting there. I'm like, Oh, I'm so overworked. I'm so overworked. And then I look at this guy that owns a Vietnamese restaurant because it's Vietnamese food. I love Vietnamese food. And this guy, I'm realizing this guy wakes up at four o'clock in the morning, seven days a week to buy the food and get to the restaurant and set everything up and do all this and do all that. And he's there. I'm eating my dinner. I'd always get there 10 minutes to 10 because they would close the restaurant at 10. I'd get there and he'd already have my clay pot going and I'm eating my clay pot as fast as I can so I can go back to work. But I, I needed to eat a healthy meal before the restaurant closed, right? So I'd get there and I'm like, dude, so he's got to now shut down the restaurant, close out the books, clean up the kitchen and shut everything down. He's probably there from 11 o'clock at night, goes home and he's there at four o'clock in the morning waiting for the first food delivery. No vacations. I'm like, but I have a chance of glory. I have a chance of becoming a bajillionaire. I, I, I'm in newspapers. I'm on TV. Like I was a kid. I was in the Inc. Magazine hot startup edition. I was at, I had featured articles in the Canadian newspaper that like the National Post wrote a whole article about me. Like, I felt, I was a kid. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm glorious. I'm, 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 oh, right? I'm just so caught up into it. And then I realized I'm bitching and moaning how hard it is. And this guy doesn't have a chance at glory. He's not trying to make a billion dollars. He's not even trying to change the world. But he has hard work. And then I remember my roots. I'm from Saskatchewan where people grow wheat. You want hard work and work at 4.30 in the morning? Become a wheat farmer. We don't know hard work. That's bajonkers. Right? You want hard work? I always say, like, become a farmer, repair fences. It's not that complicated. The fence is tilting. All right, get out there. Dig a hole. Put a post in it. Stick some bar bar on it. Look, there's only 10 miles to go. Keep going. Oh, is it no shade for you? Is it hot and dry out? Is it dusty? Right? Like, dude, we're sitting in this air-conditioned, beautiful paradise. All we have to do is click a button once a day, like uh, M3 cell. This is glorious, guys. This is glorious. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right, JL? There is no clock on a farm. It's relentless. Relentless. Right? Yeah, by the way, Alex, I cashed out before the crash. If you want to time it, I was already in Georgia waiting for Ben Bernanke to cut interest rates. I had already sold my house in California. We already cashed out of the stock market. Life savings. Okay. Moved to Georgia from California. Right. And we're waiting 
and I bought a house and I knew interest rates were going to be cut, but they hadn't been cut yet, right? And I timed the closing for the day after Ben Bernanke cut interest rates. That was the day of the first close. So go back and figure that out. So I must have been here three months before then. Three months. I was here three months before Ben Bernanke cut interest rates for the first time. When I got here, the stock market was still going up. So I'm telling you, within 90 days of the crash, I cashed out of everything. But you know what? It's just a trade. It's the same as here. Like, did you sell that? You were supposed to sell it. You told me you were a bear. Did you sell it? No, it was too early in the morning. Well, what am I supposed to do? Right? What am I supposed to do to help you if you're like, I want to become filthy, stinking rich and drive a yellow Lamborghini, but 4.30 is too early, right? You understand? That's too early. When the Silicon Valley was awesome, people slept under their desk. They don't do it anymore, by the way. People move to the Silicon Valley to get stink, filthy, stinking rich. The same way people come to Forex and they want a yellow Lamborghini. They're fools. They're children. 4.30 is pretty early to do a trade. Sleep under your desk. Get up. You know what I used to do when I was in California and I had to trade at 4.30 in the morning like that? I put a headlamp on. I woke up in the morning, pitch black, my wife sleeping. I would get up. I'd go to my closet. And by the way, right, closets in California are so small, right? You open them up and, like, your clothes don't even fit in the stupid things. Two million dollar house. You don't have closet space. So anyways, I go in there. And in the closet, right, was a headlamp. And I, I put it on, and I had a headlamp, and I could walk through the house without turning any lights on. Because a $2 million house is so small, if you turn the light on in the kitchen, someone bitches in the, in the master bedroom. <laughs> right? What are you doing? It's 5 o'clock in the morning. Honey, I'm getting filthy, stinking rich, y'all. Okay. Then sleep under your desk. Okay? What's the big deal? Go to the Tempur-Pedic store and say, hey, do you have a child, child's bed size Tempur-Pedic mattress? And they're like, oh, why? Uh, you need a, your, your child needs a Tempur-Pedic? Like, no, I need something to fit under my desk so I can, I can crawl up in fetal position and sleep on a Tempur-Pedic. But, like, you don't have that in you? This is a zero-sum game, right? You don't have that in you? You're not going to be at the cigar bar on a Friday night while your family's enjoying theater and working on statistical mathematical equations that will blow your mind. You're not competing then. You're not in the competition. What am I supposed to do if I teach you technical analysis and you're like, yeah, I saw that, but it was 4.30 in the morning. I can't do it. I can't fix that, bro. You're going to have to lease your Lamborghini. You're going to have to lease your Lambo. Hey, all you need to do is make about, what, less than 2000 And don't, a Giardo doesn't count, by the way. Right? Oh, yeah, I did the fruit. Oh, my God, Jim, for years and years and years. Whatever. Yeah. But you know what? You only need, like, uh, not a, what, uh, what's the, uh, I have Mercy Alago stuck in my brain, but that's uh, that's the older one. Um, not a, why, why can't I think of it? Um, a Macan? Okay, a Macan. Get a Macan. How much is a Macan? 
least. What, $1,500 a month? You can't make $1,500 a month? Then you have a severe shortage of AUM. But you can do it. $1,500? bucks. there you go. You got your Lamborghini. How about a Huracan? Lamborghini Huracan. Fifteen hundred bucks a month. It's yours. You not you might not be able to afford to change, you know fix the brakes. <laughs> like what are you gonna do when you take it in? They're like it's it's uh yeah it's nine thousand eight hundred dollars of to 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 do your brakes. You're like I don't have ten grand. Oh well you'll you'll still have to pay the lease payments, right? What was the trigger? First of all, if you know how to swing trade, that's it. Okay, this is just a swing trade. If you, I want to, and take this seriously, please. Okay, I asked you first, are we bulls or bears? Everyone said bears. If you don't see the trade here, you need to take the swing trading course. Okay, you just have to. You just have to. Now you might be, you know, debating, well, is it a 5A cross? Is it, is it this lower low? Is it a lower high low? You, you're, you're missing it, right? You're just missing. You're complicating things. It's just a sell. If you were there right at that moment, which I, every day, every week, I implore you, be there, be there, be there, be there, be there, be there. You would say, oh, look at that, sell, put a stop there, you're done, walk away. You you spent 32 seconds setting that up. You're like, well, how do I know if it's going to fall? You know, but here's what your business is. You risk this much and you're going for this much. You're going to lose, let's say often. But you will also often be right. That's why scalping never works. Because you can't be right so often that you make big money because you're right so often. It's just a lot of work too, bro. It's just a lot of work. Okay? If you miss, can you still get in? It's not good to miss. It's just like, well, I mean, it's such a big thing, right? It's such a big thing that you missed it. To me, it's like a paramount thing. So for me, if I said to you, oh, yeah, well, if you miss it, you can get to the next one. It is true. But the thing is that you missed it. It's such a big thing. It's uh, it's not a technical analysis thing. It's not a fundamental analysis thing, right? It, it's it it's a it's almost like a personality thing. Now, like okay, maybe you missed like you were flying in an airplane or something. But if you always miss it, right? That's the thing that's holding you back. And it's then it, it's a thing of discipline. Okay, right? It's a thing of discipline. So you need to somehow build discipline. It would be something like you need to do the thing that you haven't been doing, you need to start doing. You need some uncomfortableness. You know what I mean? Your life is too com comfortable. You've put yourself in a shell. And when you're a kid... You probably explored and you tried things and you challenged things and you you jumped off tall things and you climbed up tall things and you're, you're just seeking and learning, right? And somehow in your sort of adult life, you've cocooned yourself in, in safety. And uh, because you find you're not going to get hurt because you didn't climb the tree, right? So you're stuck now. You need to be uncomfortable. So you need to do things like 
You need to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and trade that. And if you don't do it, you need to sleep in your bathtub. And it's amazing because you laugh when I say it, but I know, right? Right? I know maybe two of you listening right now, two of you will take me serious. And you will put in the effort and dedication. Right? And it's those two people I connect with that matters. The two people that are audacious enough and is serious enough to do something like that, it's those two that will be successful. Okay? But then you're like, but I guess I'm supposed to give you the, the easy answer. All right, well, let's do it this way. If my mouse will work, it'd be helpful. All right. If you, okay, if you miss this, will you have another opportunity? Yeah, but you're going to miss that too. You're going to miss that. Don't worry. And you, because you lack discipline, you'll also probably buy this. Oops. You'll probably buy, buy this and you'll do this. And you know this makeup weird shit. I mean, the issue is not your intellect in that scenario. I don't know what it is and I'm not intimating that's your problem. But it is a problem. If, it, if it's not your intellect, if I, I asked you earlier, do you honestly believe you have the capability of being able to trade successfully, whatever the word, wordage was, competently? Everyone's like, yes. Then what if that time goes by and you're still not doing it? Is it your competence or is it something else? then don't worry about it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't hide or cry or yell at me and call me an a-hole or an arrogant, whatever. Dude, it ain't me. But you can change it. But you have to be honest with yourself. What is holding it back? Is, is, is it technical analysis? Is it fundamental analysis? Or is it psychological? Is it emotional? Is it something as simple as discipline? Then join the Marines. Join the Army. Very inspirational. You know what they tell you in the Army? Your collar is a disgrace. That is not how you wear your uniform. Is that... Is that a piece of thread? Right? I don't know if they do that anymore. I used to love that in the old movies, though, right? I think they're probably now very inclusive. They probably coddle in the, in the Marines now, but they're like, You call yourself a soldier? I see a thread coming out of your button! Right? You're like, that is not perfect. Mark, 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 turn! I've seen it, right? They're marching, and when they turn, like, don't you turn until you touch that spot. Right? Your lace is out of position. This is supposed to be 38 millimeters from the top. This is clearly 40 millimeters. What were you thinking? Right? You didn't. <laughs> right? You call those corners on your sheets. You call yourself a Marine. You're like, oh my God. I, right? They teach you how to brush your teeth. They teach you how to make your bed, how to fold your socks, how to tie your tie. Why? Because they're just asking for commitment and the discipline to do it right. That's all I'm asking you to do too. You can learn technical analysis. But then the, the next step is, you're up, you're awake, you're, you're completely <laughs> focused and alive, okay? Back when I did sales, when I was a young man, I'm an entrepreneur. What does an out-of-work out entrepreneur do? Sales, 
okay? I would drink a pot of coffee like this. Boom, 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 boom. A whole pot of coffee. Freshly brewed pot of coffee. You're like, well, wait, how do you drink it? You burn yourself. Aha! So in the freezer, I had one of those giant beer mugs that you actually freeze. It actually becomes frozen ice. So I'd put the hot coffee in there and go, blah, 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 And I'd get on the phone and I'd be a maniac. But I'm committed. I'm ridiculously committed. But before that, five minutes before that, I'm calm, I'm peaceful, I have a candle lit, I enjoy the sunrise, and then I'd sit down and I'd write my goals. I'm not joking. And I did this process every day, and I had a very unique process that I designed for myself, and I, I created roles. I don't need to get into it. But at the beginning of every week, I would say this week, Actually, before that, I'd review everything I did last week, positive, negative, and all that. Kind of sounds like what I say you should do with your trading, right? But anyways, I reviewed and all the actions I took and all the actions I didn't took and take, right? And I would be very cognizant of what I achieved and what I didn't achieve. And then I'd take the paper, I'd pull it off. I literally had these all printed. I had to go to Kinko's back then. I had them all photocopied, what I designed on Word. I had them photocopied about probably 365 of them. No, no, 52 because of the weeks, right? And then I had them bound with um, cardboard on the back. So I literally had like a pad of paper that I made for myself. Yes, I am that retarded. I've been doing this for a long time. I know how to be a success. So I went through, and I'd review everything I did and I would tear off the sheet. I'd crumple it up and I'd throw it away. And it was such an amazing thing didn't matter but I knew what I did I knew what I didn't achieve and I okay and then I'd have a blank sheet and I'd create all the roles I'm going to be a CEO I'm going to be a son I'm going to be an athlete I am going to be a boyfriend right because I was a young man and I had all these things and then I create goals for each role of things that I can do this week and I'd have about four or five things I would would not try, but like should do this week. And if I can get to them, I should do them. I should call my mom, for example. So I'd have all these goals, right? It's all about the plan, the intention, the focus, the intensity. But once I went through my plan, because one of my roles would be a salesman, how many dials am I going to do a day? How many pitches am I going to do? How many contracts am I going to get out? How many closes? How much money am I going to make? All of that is all there. And I plan it all out. And the candle is going. And I got the light coming in. And then I go over the, to the fridge. And I get out the ice frozen mug. And now I'm a ridiculous, insane maniac. A ridiculous maniac, berserk, berserk maniac. You couldn't stop me. I am going to dominate was my simple objection. Talk about ridiculous, sickening work ethic, huh? That was what I was doing when I was 23. Building a multi-million dollar company. Because I knew what I was doing. And that's what I'm trying to get you at with Forex. Hey, learning how to trade a moving average and selling a pivot, that's easy, bro. That's easy, bro. We'll get you there. And you know it. That's the thing, right? You know it. You're going to get there too. You know it. I asked you. You're like, yes. You're going to be able to trade technically with competency. I will teach you, you will learn, and then the real interesting stuff starts to happen. You understand? But you have to be your own drill instructor sometimes. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can be there in the morning yelling at you, 
telling you, telling you to do your collar properly. Shine your boots. You might have to you might have to do that yourself. I don't know. So anyways, I've gone on too long today. I apologize for that. I want you to succeed. I want to push you, pull you, whatever. Uh, but you're going to have to do the work yourself. Okay. The technical analysis stuff, go to fxbootcamp.com or just come in here every single day, day after day after day, and like water over stone. Right? Like water over stone. Think of it. Water over a stone. Eventually the stone or the water will wear off the stone. The water is liquid. The stone is solid. But eventually the water will wear down the stone in just a matter of time. So just a matter of time, I will, I will tear away your wrong perceptions. Right? I will, I will dissolve all these illusions and you will see the matrix one day. Or you will die trying or you will quit. Right? You will die trying, and I will respect you. You will quit. I won't remember you. Or you will succeed, and we'll be laughing together forever. And we'll make the world a better place. Why? Because at first, you'll take care of what your needs, and then you're going to take care of generations of your family, and then you're going to give back to society and make the world a better place. You and I. That's it. You and I, we can do it. So, peace on earth. Where's my mousey mouse? Oop, I gotta turn this off. Gotta go over there. So, uh, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Make sure you thank Trader's Way for making this available to you. Tradersway.com. Open an account. Again, you can. If you're a scalper, do the fixed spread. If you're a day trader, do the variable spread. You don't like paying spreads, do the ECN account. If that it floats your boat, it probably ends up being the same. But there's reasons for all these different things. So if you want an ECN, do the ECN. Under that, visit fxbootcamp.com. There's lots and lots and lots. There's, there's probably 100 hours of training videos that will teach you how to trade properly. Huh? And if you got no money, come here every single day. There's probably 4,000 videos on YouTube that I've done or associated with my work that are totally free. Just do all those. So go to the Trader's Way YouTube channel, the Forex.Today YouTube channel, the FX Bootcamp YouTube channel. It's all there. See you tomorrow. Cheers.